currently the sales manager and also a founding member of the Happy Earth Cleaning Cooperative. Uh, it was a business that started as an LLC in 2010. I joined as an employee in 2014, and then we transitioned into an employee-owned cooperative in January of 2020. Uh, our previous owners were interested in selling the business to move back to their home, uh, hometown of Seattle, but they recognized that the unique culture that they had built up at Happy Earth was kind of an anomaly within the cleaning industry, which is not known for treating its employees very well. And they wanted to make sure that culture was preserved after they left because they had put so much effort into it. And after considering many options, we realized that transforming into an employee owned cooperative would be the best way to make sure Happy Earth could continue to serve its employees and its customers uh, well into the future. The process of becoming an employee-owned cooperative was actually a little easier than we expected. Uh, it was, you know, a little bit of work. Uh, those of us, there was a team of about five employees who were interested in becoming the first round of member owners in the cooperative. And we spent about a year doing some trainings. You know, it was like once a month. It wasn't really intensive training. But we learned a lot of really good stuff working with uh, Project Equity. They taught us some basic uh, business principles is essentially the way uh, you want to describe it. So we were, you know, relatively green employees. We didn't know too much about business. We had to learn about how to put together a budget. What's a P&L sheet? What's a cash flow statement? How do we write our bylaws? So there were some of those logistical things we tackled as a team, but those were really good life and business skills that all of us can now take anywhere uh, in our career and be successful with. So Although it was a little bit more work, I think it was really worth it. And the rest of the transition really looked remarkably similar to selling the business any other way. I think transitioning um, to a cooperative really made a big positive difference, both for the success of our company and also for our employees. And honestly, also for our community and our customers, it's really kind of been a win-win-win in that way. Two major differences that we've noticed, uh, as, as I mentioned, we became a cooperative in January of 2020. And in March of 2020, a global pandemic was underway. And so um, it was kind of a hard year for us. Business did drop off a little bit. If I really think about it, um, I'm very thankful that we transitioned to a co-op in January because I'm not sure if we would have survived uh, 2020 under private ownership. And that's not to you know, cast any judgment on the previous owners. They were a bit overworked before a global pandemic hit. And it really took all five of us employee owners constantly meeting, making decisions, um, and applying our minds to the problem of surviving the pandemic to really get through. And now that we've, you know, there were some difficult times in 2020, like most small businesses experienced. But now that, you know, we're a year on and we're looking at the, at the hopefully the end or some kind of end for this pandemic, uh, our business is really picking up again. We're back up to our pre-pandemic level of sales and we're actually poised to grow bigger than we have before. So just by weathering that difficult time as a team, as a group of employee owners, now we're really poised for success on the other side. One of the other big differences of uh, becoming an employee-owned cooperative is uh, it's become probably our single biggest selling point for new customers and also existing customers. Uh, before, when we were an LLC, the fact that we use eco-friendly uh, products and supplies and practices in our work was our biggest selling point to new customers. But now I'd say at least 75% of new customers who reach out to us say, we love the fact that you're a cooperative We'll pay any price to have you clean for us, which is really an amazing thing because we are one of the higher price services in the cities. So it's been great um, in terms of generating just an unfathomable amount of community goodwill. You know, we were lucky to have a group of motivated employees who were willing to go through that training. So you, it could be said um, that that was an obstacle for sure, because it was definitely extra work and we weren't necessarily paid for it. It was something that we were 
um, doing to better ourselves and to better the business. So, but it was also kind of fun and uh, we kind of enjoyed it. And like I said, it was useful skills. So it really was, you know, the work of learning and probably the other biggest obstacle that we, we expected it to be a lot bigger than it was, um, was just making sure that we could make the financing work. So when we, when we first looked at uh, transitioning to an employee-owned cooperative, the business was valued at like $250,000. And the five of us were like, are we each gonna have to pay $50,000 to buy the business? And it was very scary prospect, but that is just absolutely not the case. Uh, like any other business, the co-op was able to take out a loan and we're, you know, we're paying that off uh, on the profits of the business right now. It hasn't eaten into the profits too bad. And so the finances were manageable on the loan side. And we were actually able to set our employee buy-in at a very affordable $1,000. Uh, and employees can take up to a year to pay into that buy-in. So we were actually able to keep it, although we were a little scared, we were actually able to keep it financially very feasible for our employees. I would encourage all business owners to seriously consider some form of employee ownership as a succession plan. I think one of the biggest problems is that, you know, ESOPs, co-ops, and EOTs often just aren't considered uh, when it comes time to make an exit strategy. And I think that's, that's kind of a big oversight in the business world, especially because, you know, we really could use some positive change, not only in the economic business sphere, but in our larger culture as a whole. And employee ownership really stands to create more equity for regular working class people. And if that's the kind of lasting and durable legacy that you care about for your business and all the effort that you've put into it over the years, then I think you owe it to yourself and your employees to seriously consider some form of employee ownership as your exit strategy.